my major concern with all of these types of studies is that they're actually asking the wrong question. The key question in clinical practice is which glycemic measure best predicts the risk of microvascular complications, in particular retinopathy. And for that, the recent other evidence suggests that hemoglobin one is at least as good and perhaps the best predictor of microvascular risk um, and is least as good as fasting glucose and that two-hour glucose tolerance test is a very poor predictor of retinopathy risk. But if you put all of that into clinical practice, many primary care physicians find uh, the ability to measure hemoglobin one at any time of the day and also do it along with other cardiovascular risk factors so you can do a combined cardiovascular and diabetes risk assessment actually makes pragmatic sense. And I think that's where the practice is going. And we do need a bit more evidence whether using hemoglobin one and fasting glucose together improves our ability to predict risk of microvascular complications. But t to my mind, again, people are forgetting the point that we can actually repeat tests over time as people progress with their disease. So each factor will progress. If we start to introduce wide-scale hemoglobin one how much extra cost will there be to detect more patients with diabetes in a pragmatic sense? And my estimation is that the cost benefit will be very favorable for hemoglobin one but we need to look at this. The, the, the difference in around about dollars is probably about one to two dollars. So not massively you know, more expensive in, re in realistic terms, but it's a cost I think we probably would be willing to wait, make. There are still a few people who are voicing a little bit of concern but I think we have to address those concerns and over time I think we will manage to address those concerns and hemoglobin A1 will become the preferred test for diabetes in the vast majority of individuals. Not all individuals but the vast majority. Clearly there's a subgroup in whom glucose measures will still be used but the vast majority I think hemoglobin A1 will be the, the gold standard test. The test is solid and it's convenient and it predicts up risk of microvascular complications and it can be dovetailed with cardiovascular risk screening which is absolutely critical because uh, people fundamentally forget that we cannot just do diabetes screening on its own because if you, pe you may have people who are low risk of diabetes but high cardiovascular risk so if you don't do combined testing you can falsely reassure those individuals so I think it, for many reasons I think hemoglobin A1 will make the grade.